Yay! We've made it to our final introduction class in this series. If you're new here, hello, I'm Casey, and this is my lovely yoga assistant, May. So far in this series, we covered the liver gallbladder meridian, the heart lung intestine meridian, the stomach spleen meridian, and today is our kidney urinary bladder meridian. In yin yoga, we hold our postures for three minutes. Today, all of our postures will be held for three minutes except for one. Don't worry about that now. Here during class, I will speak for the first minute and then I will be silent for the following two. And I do this because a lot of practitioners, especially of yin, enjoy the silence. If you don't, that's totally okay. I would just suggest that you bring along a playlist of your own that's maybe really calming music or just instrumental music. Other things that I would suggest that you grab are a bolster or a couch pillow. Today I would actually suggest two couch pillows, a blanket. If you have a block for big books, you can bring those along too, but if not, no worries. Also today, if you can position yourself near a wall, we're going to be using a wall in one of our postures today. If not, um, a folding chair would be great or near a couch, but I'm sure you can figure it out if you can't get near a wall anyway. The other thing that I wanted to mention here at the top of practice is that a lot of our postures today will include forward folds. And I know that this is one of the postures where a lot of times we can hear a lot of negative voices in our heads. And I just wanted to make the point that here in yin yoga, um, we're really not super concerned with how far we can fold over. So that's why we have names for our postures like dangling or sleeping swan. Whereas in yang, there is a posture that's called head to knee pose. But here in yin, that's just not really the concern. So go ahead and repeat after me. There is no prize for getting my head to my knee. And you can use that anytime during practice that you need to. So go ahead and meet me back here in a comfortable seat and let's jump right in. Bring your folded blanket over to sit on. I would encourage you to sit on it for our next few postures. Beginning in a crossed-legged position, bring your right leg on top of your left, moving to stack the knees. Your left leg is on the bottom, foot near your right hip. Your right leg is stacked on top, right foot near left hip. If you find a lot of space between your knees, place a blanket between them. A good place to start, if you're new to this posture, is to extend your bottom leg. If this posture aggravates the knees, Take a lying figure four instead. If it feels like it will work in your body today, slowly fold over your legs, either on palms, elbows, or tummy to legs. Bring your attention to the legs. See if you can release any tightness you're holding here. We call this shoelace in yin. I encourage you to close your eyes during all of our postures, allowing your focus to turn inward. 
Before we get into the meridians, I wanted to talk about our spines in yin. We're often told in yang forms of yoga to keep our spines straight. In general, in yin, it is all right to round the back. Rounding helps affect the spinal ligaments more than keeping a straight spine. A rule for this spine curvature is not to collapse your chest, as this can affect your diaphragm and ultimately your breathing in the posture. Allow the spine to round, but maintain length around the diaphragm. If you find these types of folds are uncomfortable with a curved spine, sit up tall and fold forward, stopping when your back starts to round. If you have an already exaggerated curve in your spine called kyphosis, you may want to avoid long-held forward folds altogether and maybe do a figure four instead. Slowly bring your torso up. Stretch the legs out long and do a few wiper movements with your feet. Bring the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Sitting on the blanket allows us to tilt our pelvis forward, discovering a bit more space. Keep your right leg straight out in front of you. Inhale, exhale, fold over. You may choose to keep your neck in line with your spine here or relax it down onto any elevated props. Take ownership of your body and use whatever props are needed for today. Because we're working with the kidney, urinary, bladder meridians, I encourage you to work to straighten the leg. Note that this pose is absolutely not about how far you can fold over. So if you can't get very far over in a fold, that is not a problem here. Keeping the leg straight just encourages your body to find space in the back leg and hip instead of the low back. If you find this to be quite uncomfortable, maybe fold up a washcloth or towel and place it under your knee. Yin yoga might sound a little bananas to people. We're stretching our connective tissue, which includes joints, fascia, and bones. 
pioneer of yin yoga, Paul Grilly, made a really wonderful illustration of yin yoga that I would like to share. One day, someone got the idea to exercise their teeth because they were crooked. Following what they learned from working out at the gym, this person decides to take a tooth and wiggle it back and forth ten times for three sets. They do this with all their teeth. After a month, all their teeth fall out. So, everyone learns that it is a bad idea to exercise your teeth. They do studies and experiments and every time reinforce that exercising your teeth is a bad idea. Then, some guy comes along and says, I'm going to exercise my teeth. Everyone tells him not to, that it's a bad idea. But this guy decides to do very gentle stretching over a long period of time. And to do this, he's going to use a device called braces. After months and months, he discovers he has exercised his teeth into being straight. Gently bring your torso upright. Let your left leg go long and flex your feet forward and backwards. We're going to take shoelace on the other side now. So bend your knee, bringing your right leg to the bottom, knee out in front of you right foot near left hip. Bring your left leg on top, moving to stack the knees. Left foot near right hip. Take a moment here to feel out this side of the body. The props and modifications you took earlier might not be the same that you take now. Or, if you didn't take modifications earlier, you may need to now. Once you discover where this side of your body is, move to fold forward. Relax the thighs. Why were the braces effective on bone? Because it's gentle and held for a long time. You can't say, we're going to crank the braces up and say, instead of six months, I'll hold it for three. You're bringing a yang mindset to a yin stretch. You can hurt your teeth. You can crack your teeth. It will take a certain amount of time for the bones of your mouth to change. We have to wait for the teeth, wait for the jaw. This works even though we don't think of it as exercise. But the principle is entirely yin. A modest stress 
for a long time. Changing the bones in your mouth is much harder than trying to change the connective tissue in your joints. Yes, if you're too aggressive in your movements to your joints, you injure them. You have to take a yin approach. Slowly bring your torso up. Stretch the legs out long and make some circles with your toes. Bring the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Keep your left leg straight out in front of you. Inhale. Exhale, fold over. Remember to use any amount of props to get comfortable in the spine here. You may even find a bit of space that you've created already. If no amount of pillows seem to be enough, feel free to incorporate a folding chair for torso support. Another great yin yoga teacher has said, In yin, we don't use the body to get into the pose. We use the pose to get into the body. I love this description of yin as the time held in postures can drastically aid us in what I like to think of as a deep dive into the inner space. We get into a position where we find our edge, and then we release, leaving us with a heavy, relaxed body and a mind to soak in for multiple minutes at a time. In this final yin introduction, I wanted to touch on this aspect of yin, the introspection. There are many benefits to meditating and mindfulness, both of which can be practiced during yin yoga. Meditation is the art of stillness and quiet. It's a common misconception that during meditation one is not thinking. The point of meditation isn't to not think but to notice your thoughts and not engage with them, to let them float by. Practicing mindfulness is different than meditation in that you are fully present and processing what is going on right now.
slowly come up. Allow your body to dictate what you do now to find some comfortable movement. After having your head forward, you may choose to use your arms as kickstands and lean your head back, having bent or straight legs, making windshield wiper movements. This will be our last forward fold. Open your legs wide. Activate your feet here as if you were standing. Sit up straight and scoot your sits bones back a bit, looking for a forward tilt of the pelvis. You may want to bring a pillow or maybe even two to rest your torso on here. Fold over. There is no amount of propping too great here. Use what is needed. You may choose to prop only your chest and let your head hang, as we've done this shape multiple times now. If pillows aren't available, simply fold forward onto your palms, forearms, or the floor. Many studies have been conducted on meditation. These studies have been able to show the physical changes in the brain of meditators. In long-term meditators, the brain does not thin out as it does with age in non-meditators. After just 12 to 20 minutes a day for several weeks, Meditators score higher on attention span and memory retention. Meditation has been shown to reduce blood pressure, improve the ability to control your emotions, reduce depression and chronic pain. So much can be said for meditation techniques, but in short, in the context of yin, Practicing meditation could look like this. When you've settled into your posture, focus on your breathing and let that become your anchor. Pay attention to your inhales and your exhales. When thoughts come up, let them come and go without engaging them. When this occurs, say to yourself, I am thinking, or simply, thoughts. Then come back to focusing on your breathing. Be kind and patient with yourself. This will take practice. Use your hands to slowly bring you back up. Lean back and rest on your forearms. Close the legs. Again, 
take any movements your body is intuitively asking you to take. Keep your legs bent or long, still or finding movement. We'll be here for just a few breaths. Bring your blanket, folded, pretty low, about a foot from the top of your mat. Come to a seat, swinging your legs around and behind you until you are all the way on your stomach. Bring your elbows under your shoulders, then out an inch, palms flat on the ground, or on your blanket if you're using one. Imagine pushing away from the mat with your elbows and forearms. Keep moving your elbows forward if you're finding this to have too much sensation in the shoulders. You can keep your head in line with the spine or let the chin fall to the chest for a nice stretch in the back of your neck. Another option is to bring a block, Papa Bear style, between your elbows and rest your forehead down. Relax your legs here. Mindfulness has been described simply as paying attention to the present moment. If you consider your day, or perhaps yesterday, When you think about what you did, ask yourself, was I truly there? Were you mentally engaged in that moment, person, or activity, or was your attention somewhere else? So much of our lives ends up taking place in our minds. Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh has contributed a large majority of information to the art of mindfulness. As a Buddhist monk, he has devoted much of his life to it. Something he once said that I come back to frequently is, I wash the dishes to wash the dishes. Illustrating that even in a mundane task, he is mindful and fully present. He feels the water on his hand, smells the soap, notes the bubbles that are formed. When holding our postures in yin, this is a truly fantastic training area for mindfulness, as we tend to have less distractions. Through this practice, we can take it off the mat and to our loved ones and the people around us. How does mindfulness look during yin practice? You would settle into the posture, finding your edge and bodily release, then actually go outward to process inward. This could be you noting the stability of the floor under the tops of your feet in this posture, Perhaps realizing you're holding tension in your glutes, smelling what is around you, listening to the gentle sounds of your surroundings. It's paying attention to the present moment. Let your elbows wing out off your mat and rest your forehead on the hands. 
it may feel good to place the hands along the sides of your body, resting a cheek on the floor. Roll onto your back. Bring the knees into the chest, holding them in a comfortable position and finding some gentle movement. Come to stillness. Guide your legs to the right. Find a comfortable twist here. The closer the knees are to the chest, the deeper the stretch in the back. It may feel good to place a blanket between the knees. Let your right arm rest on your leg. Bring your left arm out long on the ground or in a cactus shape framing your head. Your head can be in any direction, but you'll deepen this stretch if it is turned away from your knees. Today's meridian focus are the kidney urinary bladder meridians. The kidneys filter 12 gallons of blood an hour, cleaning and breaking it down into nutritional elements for the body. They regulate blood pressure and glucose metabolism, and oversee balancing fluids. When unbalanced, we see hypertension, high blood pressure, toxicity in the body, swelling, bloating, difficulty urinating, and can have an achy lower abdomen. The kidney meridian starts at the little toe on each foot, running through the sole and up the inside of the legs, tailbone and lower spine, through the kidneys and bladder, externally over the abdomen and chest, internally through the liver, diaphragm and lungs, through the throat, and ends at the tongue. The kidney meridian system is the one that leads all the others. It goes through one organ for each of the other meridian pairs. This is important because if the kidney system is off balance, it's likely to affect the others. The kidney's energetic health governs the health of the lower back. If we suffer from a sensitive back, it is almost certain we have kidney energy issues. The kidney meridian is also connected to our sense of hearing and corresponds to the ears. Roll onto your back, bringing your knees to the chest. Let the legs fall to the left side now. Left hand to legs, right hand out long on the ground. Ensure the neck is turned the opposite direction from the other side. The yang pairing to the yin kidney meridian is the urinary bladder. 
the kidneys open up into the bladder, which is the storage site for urine. The urinary bladder meridian is the longest meridian. It is also the only major meridian to go through the brain. When imbalanced, we can experience backaches, headaches, issues urinating, and disease in the lower limbs. The urinary bladder meridian starts at the inside of the eyes, goes up the forehead, and enters the brain then runs down the back body along the spine. A branch goes off this spot and into the kidneys and urinary bladder. The outer branch runs along the back side of the legs and ends at the little toes. Roll onto your right side. Prop yourself up on your right elbow and let your legs go long. Bend the right leg so the foot comes near the buttocks. Grab your right foot with your left hand if it's possible. If not, just let your left hand fall to the floor behind your back. Keep your left leg long and slowly start moving it towards the top of the mat. Stop when you feel a nice stretch in the IT band. This is cat pulling its tail pose. Stay here or deepen the stretch by coming down off your elbow and gently laying your shoulders and head to the floor. This is a great twist as well as an IT band stretch in the top leg and quadricep stretch in the bottom leg. When the kidneys are out of balance, the big main emotion we will experience is fear. When we are consumed by a suffocating presence of fear, We tax our kidney energy, and if our kidney energy is deficient, we will feel fearful more readily. We may hold on to things or people with the fear of letting go. We will have the tendency to procrastinate as we have a fear of failure. We will experience an overall lack of trust in ourselves or others. Paranoia, panic, terror, 
loneliness, indecisiveness, blind submission, and insecurity are all symptoms of unbalanced kidney chi. People with chi stagnation in these channels over time can have trouble completing tasks, less energy and sexual drive, feel less enthusiasm to follow through with our plans, and are unable to cope with life and changes. This makes more sense when we understand the kidney and urinary bladder meridians' influence in our body is connected with the limbic system in the brain. The limbic system controls sleep cycles, appetite, libido, motivation, promotes bonding, and sets the emotional tone of the mind. Come up on your elbow if you had your shoulders resting on the floor. Release your right foot and lay on your back. Roll onto your left side, propping yourself up on your left elbow. Bend the left leg, keeping the right leg long. If possible, grab onto your left foot with your right hand. Keeping the right leg straight, move it towards your torso. Again, you may wish to stay here, or to deepen the stretch, lay shoulders and head on the mat. The congenital meaning from birth, emotions of our kidney energy are wisdom, clear perception, rationality, self-understanding, and self-confidence. When kidney energy is balanced, we can experience gentleness, openness, willpower, ambition, and the ability to trust in something bigger than ourselves. Healthy kidney energy promotes the ability to take risks and work from a partial plan instead of needing every detail involved. Healthy kidney chi helps us navigate dilemmas or undesired emotions with ease. Fear is not a bad emotion. Fear is natural and appropriate. Having healthy kidney energy allows us to process fear and experience it in a healthful and efficient way when necessary.
come up on your elbow if you aren't there now. Release your right foot and lay on your back. Bring your knees to your chest, finding whatever movement feels good here. For our resting posture today, we'll be taking legs up the wall. If you don't have a wall near you, simply take savasana or a reclined butterfly shape. Move your mat or blanket perpendicular to a wall. Sit so your side is right next to it. Simultaneously, kick your legs out and up the wall while lying your torso on the ground. You may need to scoot yourself a few inches away from the wall or bend your knees a bit. Another way to take this posture is to lay on the floor in front of a couch, bending the knees and placing the shins on the couch. You will still receive the benefits of this posture taking any of these modifications. We will hold this posture a bit longer to receive the maximum benefits. After a few minutes, you will probably feel tingling in your feet. This is normal. This is one of my top three favorite postures. This posture helps to counter the postures we take all day, mostly sitting and standing. There are many reasons this is one of the best postures to take daily, soothing and calming the nervous system being highly ranked on that list. This posture is great for blood circulation, energy boosts, alleviating headaches, menstrual cramps, and relieving lower back pain. For our closing time of silence today, I would once again like to share a poem with you. The moon and the sun are love and fear. One fades as the other rises.
slowly bring the soles of your feet to the wall and lower them down so your knees are resting on your chest. Feel the energy start moving around your legs. Roll onto your side. Very slowly and with eyes still closed, come to a seat. I hope you have experienced something wonderful during practice today. Please check out the other three videos in this introduction series to get the full scoop on yin yoga. Until next time, namaste.